Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, let's carry on with our journal cover and I'm going to do some little cross stitches here, I think. I've got fudge on my lap here, so he needs to stay on my lap. Just stay down here, fudgy. That's it, boy. He sort of wants to be close to me, but not get in my way. Otherwise, fudgy, you'll have to move on. So I just want to put a few little, I'll just show you Fudgy, he's just, here he is. He's just sitting here. He's a good boy. Okay, back to what we're meant to be doing now. He's off and away. Sorry, Fudge, that's it. Two strikes, you're gone. Slight distraction there. You can't work easily with your cat on your lap anyway. Okay, so we're just popping a few little... X's in here. I feel like I want to add some different coloured X's here and I'm wondering if we do a line of pink and a line of blue ones. Really make it stand out. So I'll finish off. We can easily to um, take away this purple thread would be a, a probably a good idea. Okay, let's get some pink. So how's everyone been? Not much is happening here. It's been pretty quiet. So I got, um, what did I do yesterday? I, I burnt all the business stuff that was too old to be archived anymore. That took hours. My husband mowed the lawn and I just sat down by the fire pit and um, just pulled everything out, made sure there were no paper clips and clips and things like that that can't be burnt it just took so long because I didn't have a big fire and by the time you add paper it just takes forever to burn because it's uh, you'd think it'd be quick well it is if it's one sheet but if it's a pile of paper it's sort of like a, a brick but job done I've returned about six empty archive boxes to my cupboard, which will be very handy. I think I could find more in there too. I have a lot of um, product manuals every year that we have a Christmas range of products. I do a manual for the stores so that they can flip through it and see pricing and uh, photos of the items so that before the stock arrives, they can show some of their customers what's coming and they tend to take names and phone numbers. If someone's interested in a particular item, they take their name and phone number and they'll ring them when it arrives. So these product manuals, I've been in business for 20 years. I've got 20 of them sitting there and I really don't need them. I think I was hanging on to them for nostalgic reasons. So I had one go into the fire last night or yesterday and I thought, oh, there's probably more there. I could, could get rid of everything's digital now anyway. Like the product manual is still created and is in the stores and it's handy for staff to grab. But most of the store managers go straight to the electronic version on their computers. It's really just the casual staff that don't work every, you know, every day who need to quickly grab it and check an item so I still sort of need it it's one of those things in business that you can't decide if you need to do it or not but you probably do but is it because of habit that everyone's still using it it takes weeks to do as I order um, all the stock I sort of create this manual as I go and it helps me to 
see what products are coming for each category. So I can go to say, for example, stockings, and I can have a quick look at the items I may have ordered the week before from a company. And then as, a, as all the different companies come with their presentation of what stock they have for the season, I can sort of keep flicking back to categories and go, oh, I could probably do with another four stockings or I like that stocking, but I've got something similar already. So don't order that one, you know, that type of thing. So the product manual definitely is for me. Do we need a hard copy? That's the question. Do we need to print it? So yes, times are changing. So many things we used to do, we don't do anymore due to technology or new ideas. Yeah, it doesn't seem to change much in our craft room. A few little things, but we're still revel reveling is that the word relishing reveling in the old practices aren't we we go back and look through history and we see these techniques and you find that they come back all the time into what we do there we go there's the little x's something a bit different bring that up to the camera lovely So now I do need to put some stitches around this, just not quite sitting. So I might use this thread. I think it's more this side. So I'm just going to run. A line of stitching through this area here on this piece just to catch it down then I need to remove this purple thread the tacking stitch before I get too crazy because I'm ready to look at those buttons and I'm just sort of putting more and more obstacles in my way for pulling out that tacking stitch So we'll do that next, get a quick unpick. There's nothing's gonna move now. There's enough embroidery to hold. Okay. Let's just knot that one off now. And snip it. Okay, so I do need to run a little stitch around in there as well. Well, I probably don't need to, but I might. Unless a doily goes there, but I don't know. Let's just flip this over now. And let's get rid of this purple tacking stitch. If we can find where all the stitches go. And we'll just hook. this out doesn't take long to get it out it takes ages to put it in but it doesn't take us long to flick it out Okay, down the 
this one. And if you follow a line on your piece as you're putting it in, it makes it really easy to get it out. has served its purpose. I think to doing it in a different thread colour too is a, a bit of a blessing when it comes to removing it because you can see where you've been and like I did pick those colours that you like never going to use. I remember doing this a lot with quilting when you were stitching the top to the bottom and there was wadding in the middle You'd tack it all. So then you could slide it in under a sewing machine and do your final top stitching. I never hand stitched a quilt. It seems odd now that I'm back into my hand sewing. It was a perfect opportunity. I used to embroider the quilt panels a lot, like a lot hours of just outlining things with stitches but when it comes to constructing the quilt I would just run it through the sewing machine and put a line of stitching in the ditch maybe it's because I did so much hand stitching on the top of the quilt that by the time it got to the construction of it I was sort of over it and I just wanted it all stitched together completed and moving on. Okay. Now we're done. bit of a sore neck today. I must have slept a little bit crooked or something. It's only subtle, but it's enough to make you feel a little, a little flat. Maybe it'll loosen up as I sort of, you know, get moving and do some things. Muscles tend to warm up, but there's always that little injury is still there, isn't it? It's, they haven't, it hasn't gone. Must have slept crooked or something. Okay. Two rows to go. And we are sorted. Okay. Last row. Okay. Now, let's have a look at these buttons and then I can pop them away. Looks pretty cute. They're all different. They will do. Needle and thread. And I also grabbed out some braids. So... We can have a little look through some of those because there's like little daisies in there and all sorts. It's, but some of them are really bright colours. So it may not, they may not suit. It might be too bright. Okay, let's get this little button on. 
a little bit boring for you all, but I guess if you're into slow stitch and embellishing our pieces, this is what we've got to do. stitches it's not like it's holding a shirt together so you don't have to go crazy and once it's glued down there'll be also glue in there I might do four stitches but it'd be a shame to have it come off one just knot that off so it's nice and secure number two Sewing buttons on is not my most favourite thing, let me tell you. Necessary evil. Oops, now I've lost my thread. Goodness me. Okay, let's get this little button on. Be done with it. Coming off in a hurry. Do one more stitch. Okay. A little bit closer to the camera here. And button number three. Come on, where's that hole needing to be? we go. Okay. Two. Three. And we'll do one more. Four stitches is plenty for this type of work. Okay, buttons are on. Now, do we need any more buttons? Probably not, but I do want to find a home for this. But it's so big. I did have it down here somewhere, and I didn't mind it. it must, have been, must have been in there. I'm going to leave it for a moment. It just seems so big. Let's have a look at these flowers. Got all sorts of colours in here, but I think they might be too bright. 
See what I mean? They're very primary colours. I can get away with some pale pink ones, but still. They're very bright, but a little girl would like them. Gold, no. Let's get a bit of control back here. We don't want red, we don't want blue. There's two blues there. No, see they're so, so bright. I use them from time to time, but it's just got to be the right piece. Nothing, nothing there. Let's have a look at these. Are they a little bit bright? Does it matter? Probably not. Some little flowers. Would some of this be better? Let's have a look at some of the other braids. What's in here? I sort of like that satin. It's so pink. Got some little flowers. Those possibilities. It's getting very girly, girl. What's in this one? If I'm going to do any, it's going to be some of these that are... No, not the purple one. Maybe this pinky one could have a few little bits. Even that, I like it, but it's just not quite right. Like, it matches the buttons, but I don't want to go too far down that, that um, tangent. I just want some little bits and pieces around. So what do we got here? That would be on a spine coming to the front. I don't mind that. So snip that little one off and we'll just pin it. something through there would be nice maybe snip it there I need to get out some of those smaller little crocheted bits and pieces too Pinning that for now. I think that's enough of that one. Oh, I'm going to put a little piece up here. Just so that it's definitely on the front cover. Just a little bit. Now, let's put that away. I think that's all we want from those goodies. Doesn't the desk get into a mess real quick when you start bringing out these things? Okay, so that's put away. I just want to have a rummage through this lacy 
lacy container of stuff because I can see some of these little bits that I think might go. Just to sort of sprinkle around more elements. in this box of tricks. And there's a little crochet heart from when I was making the mushrooms. I think we need that on there. Where would we put it, but? That might interfere with the signature up there. Maybe I move this one to the rear here. Because it's sort of not as, as exciting as the other one. Yeah, I'll put that one there and this little heart we'll put on the front cover in here. Yeah, I like it there. It's found a home. What other treasures do we have? Ooh, pink. It's a mess. That's what we have here. There's a pink crocheted. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's got some more bits and bobs on it. A mishmash of goodies. For now, I think that will do. So I'll just move this out of my way. Okay, now we can move again. I sort of feel like I need something up here. Sorry, guys, I've got to go for another little look in my doilies. Okay, found another one. Sort of feel like that needs to be up there. Happy now. Happy, happy. I could definitely sprinkle more of these little ones around too, I think. But we'll get these stitched down to start with. Let's have a look at what the cover will look like. And that'll come over. Okay. So I feel like that's not quite right. I don't know. Can't decide about that heart. I'll think about it. Got plenty I do like there. So now I'm just going to whip around and stitch them all down. Very boring viewing for you guys, but I'm sure you're crafting away in your room or at your desk, wherever that may be, or on a train heading to work and you've got me yabbering in your ear. Hello to you. Let's just get a knot on this needle. Got some bits hanging around here, making it messy. Okay. So 
So let's just get this doily secure. They're bits from doilies. They're not full doilies as you would know them to be. They're table runners that I've cut down to give me these little motifs and they're just so handy for stitching and collaging with and trimming, trimming things with. It doesn't take long just to whip around. And secure them. Okay. So what can I tell you? See, this is just me stitching. I'm still working through the Alone series. We watched another three or four episodes last night. It's down to the last two, a lady and the man that caught that um, musk ox with all the food. He's now catching fish and oh, he caught a um, porcupine last night. That was a bit sad to watch. Poor porcupine. He was saying that the musk ox is not very fatty and our bodies need fat to function, especially our brains. There's a lot of nutrient in fat. So the, the musk ox is a very lean meat and it's all right occasionally, but you can't really survive on it. They sort of need that fat element to be there. So he's looking for fish, which he caught a random trout and that's quite a fatty fish apparently. But then he comes across this echidna not echidna, porcupine. There are echidnas in Australia, but the porcupines in Canada. I think that's where we are. Are we in Alaska? I don't know. I've watched so many of those shows now. I don't know where we are. It is snowing heavily now. So the big lake that was in front of them all is um, now freezing over. So a couple of them are uh, fishing out on the lake, which is amazing that they can walk out and dig a hole and drop a line in and out comes a trout so that was interesting to watch but boy it's pretty cold out there on that lake they don't seem to be able to sit out there for long so it's sort of like it's working for them but it's not they're sort of now getting other issues like frostbite so it's not a solution or a long-term solution, but it's certainly giving them better food. So yeah, it's down to this um, lady and the guy, and I think the lady is going to tap out. That's the, the thing, they ring in on a radio and say, I'm out, come and get me. And they're out of the game because she has noticed that her big toe has developed this blister, then the blister has now gone quite hard and now you can see that the end of her toe is starting to go purple. So a message popped up on the bottom of the TV screen that said that all about frostbite and the processes that go with frostbite. So I suspect that's what's gonna happen. She's gonna have to tap out. And we are 20 days from the finish line so just an amazing they've been out there 80 days the third last person that tapped out was the second female and she did so well really really well but as she said her head took her down she was missing home she was fishing successfully all the way through the program. Then the river iced up and she went out and created a hole and she got two or three trout. 
but as the weeks wore on she started not catching the trout as it sort of gets colder the trout go into deeper water and she was really struggling with the cold because she wasn't getting a lot of food she'd lost so much weight so and then she just started mentally starting to break down like you could just see she was just exhausted she was having trouble too with her chimney in her little hut that she built her her shelter somehow she hadn't quite got that right and nearly every fire was smoking her out of the hut so that's just terrible that's no good for her lungs she had dry eyes her sinuses had flared up due to the smoke and I think she was starting to get a bit of a sinus infection. So you could just see mentally she was feeling pretty beaten. So yeah, it was it was tough to watch. She just seemed so, oh, she seemed lovely. I was had her in my camp. I thought she might be a winner. I think she's actually gone on to be one of the presenters on the show because her voice was very familiar in the series we had just watched where when they tap out there's this lady who sits with them on some a grassy area and interviews them at the end and her voice seemed very familiar so i have a feeling that after her episode her season she then became part of the production crew and she's just so compassionate and kind when she interviews these people. And you can sort of see it in her, her way. So, yeah, she's out. And I think the second lady will be out probably tonight. I, I have a feeling we're at the last episode. We didn't look, we got quite late because you just get involved in these blooming shows. And we looked at the time and it was 11 o'clock. It's probably why I feel a little bit flat today, watching too much TV. So, yeah, it was 11 o'clock and I said to my husband, don't play the next episode. I need to go to bed. Save it. So I think the lady will be out and I think the man that caught the, the beast just gave him that edge when you can get a a big heap of food he's got um oh that's that was well, it's not funny but not funny for the squirrel he's got this squirrel that lives near his camp and he hasn't really tried to catch actually no this episode they can't eat squirrels they can eat rabbit but they can't eat squirrels they're protected in this particular region or it's that time of the year where the squirrels are protected. Anyway, so he's got this squirrel living in a tree near his camp and it drives him nuts because it's always squawking and carrying on and up to shenanigans. But he's been watching it and he's noticed that it goes to this one particular tree all the time. And this one day he spotted it come down and actually pick up a mushroom that had sprouted overnight and it took this mushroom to this tree that it's always he thought playing in but it wasn't it's got a, a cache of mushrooms up in one of the branches so in where there's like a couple branches coming out this little this little squirrel <laughs> has stashed all of his mushrooms it's so cute so what does he do chops down the tree to get the mushrooms well you should have heard the squirrel the squirrel gave him what for just squeaked and squeaked and carried on and like he was i'm gonna have to say it the squirrel was pissed off so it was it was cute to start with sad and then I was angry with this, with him too. I was like, come on. He's sitting on all this food. Now I've got a knot here. Oh, goodness me. So that was a bit rough to watch and so was the porcupine. 
I didn't think he needed to kill a porcupine. Porcupine was quite, um, quite aggressive. He spun around and put his quills up. And the other lady that's left, she also got herself a porcupine probably a couple of weeks earlier. And she'd spotted him going in and out of this rock crevasse. So she was trying to work out how she was going to get him because he was deep. And she decided she'd climb down into this crevasse. So she's gone head first and slithered down between these rock formations. So dangerous. Like there's no one out there. No one would find her. All you could see was her feet sticking out of this huge rock. And then she's like, I can see him, but he's like 12 foot, 12 foot deep into this crevasse. And then she realized, you know, I wonder if I can get to him from behind. So she whips around the other side and sure enough, it was only, it was a, like a walkthrough for a, porcupine not a human but the porcupine was obviously could come and go from either end of this rock rocky area so she spotted him she taps him on the bottom he shoots out the original doorway she whips around the other side just about breaking her neck in the process because it's all snow and rock and oh gosh it's just crazy and then she gets him but he um when she was preparing the food, preparing the meat, he had these white ulcer-like spots all through his um, liver. Did not look good. So he was a diseased porcupine. And the golden rule is if, if the organs have, you know, visible disease, you don't eat it. So she's hung up all the meat like the legs and, um, you know, the frame and stuff like that, and just hanging, hanging in the cool air. And she's trying to decide, should she eat it or not? Because she knows what the rule is. You don't eat diseased meat. And they popped up, um, I think it was tuberculosis, actually. Could be the disease. It is quite common in um, some animals. So, yes, yeah, she debates it for about three days. She tries to catch some fish. She goes down to the water. It's now icing up. She slips. She hits her head. She's now got a little gash on her eyebrow. So she keeps thinking about this porcupine hanging at her camp. Should she, should she not eat it? And she eats it. She gets hungry. So she eats a leg of this porcupine, makes a soup and... Yeah, she seems okay. I don't know if we'll find out at the end that she's developed some hideous disease. I don't think I could have. It was pretty obvious that porcupine was not healthy. So, very interesting. Not my cup of tea. I'm not a wilderness girl, but I definitely am be the tomboy I'm a farm girl but to go out <clears throat> and struggle like that in the cold and building shelter and foraging for food oh, I don't know don't think I'd find that real fun if I'm out in the wilderness I like to know my caravan is parked and plugged into power or at least a generator <laughs> And I've been to Woolies and I've bought lots of food and I'm in there kick cooking up a storm for everyone. That's my wilderness. And then after we've eaten, we can watch a movie on our little portable TV. Yeah, that's, that's, that's wilderness. And I don't have to eat any of the locals. Not that those little animals are really available here. If you're in the wilderness here, echidna is not exactly a common bush tucker. 
I'm sure our native Australians, the Aboriginal, would have eaten them. But it's certainly not common. Kangaroo, yes, but not really common. A lot of bush pig, wild pigs. But if you're camping in general, you don't really have those opportunities to catch them. There's not a lot in the areas that most camp. They're really on properties out west. And they're mean and nasty. You don't really want to be tangling with a wild pig. Especially the females. If there's babies around, oh boy. She'd do a lot of damage to you. With her teeth and her tusks. And other than that, there's dingoes, but you'll never catch a dingo. They are shy. They're aloof. They'll be watching you, but you won't know they're there watching you. You'll hear them at night as they're howling and passing messages between them, probably about you. I remember once we were camping on a friend's farm and it was a huge place out near Monto and um, very big property. And we were camping by this river that is on their property. It's the Burnett River. So for those of you in Queensland, it's the head of the Burnett River. So it eventually ends up at the coast at Bundaberg. So we were camping on this, this river. And um, oh, it was beautiful. We were there for about 10 days and we'd really settled in. There was a few of us, we had a couple of vans and the homestead, which the owners were renovating, was nearby so we could wander down and have a shower and, you know, if we needed anything from the kitchen, there was additional pots and pans. So it was really easy living. And then sometimes we'd just sit on their veranda instead of sitting around the campsite. You know, just, it was beautiful. Beautiful environment. But this one night, <clears throat> we could hear dingoes howling in the distance which was just sounded gorgeous. You know, they were way, way away. And an hour went by and we're thinking, now that howling is getting closer and closer and closer. And we're thinking, hello, we're going to have visitors. And whatever happened, but they've obviously come up the road that was near us that goes past our site where we were camping in the homestead. So they've come wandering up through there. And they've split into two groups. One group went above us. They sort of crossed off the road and went up this paddock that was behind us on this ridge. And the other group came down below us between us and the river. And there's probably about half a kilometre between us and the river. And these dogs, still howling, were now around us top and bottom. And it was the most surreal feeling. It was like, and they were, they were talking to each other. They were like, I don't know, they were sussing us out. So, yeah, it was, it was exciting, thrilling, scary, amazing. Should we go in the van and lock the door? <laughs> you know, we just weren't sure what was going on. So, yeah. It was great. Okay, guys, what have we got? We've got about 10 minutes, so I should be able to whip around this big one. Then I will have to switch off the camera, stop the video, and then I will switch it back on and start again because there's still a little bit of work to do here. And then once we get those last few little elements stitched down, we might have a think about the inside cover because we're going to have to make a decision about pocket or a side tuck. You know, how are we going to use or do we make a flip out that she can have some more goodies? Don't know. But anyway, decisions that will be made. Once we finish stitching down these little elements, we can leave this and move on to something else. Mm. 
Okay. Just a few more stitches and this one will be secure. If I went looking, I'd find so much more bits and bobs to stitch on this. But I thought I'll leave it for now. We'll see how the journal progresses. We can always come back and spend a little bit more time on it. We'll know when it's done. You just know. Okay, are we around the back corner of this thing yet? Nope, keep going. Okay, let's knot that off. That's one secure. A little bit of thread here we've got a little bit of time so let's do this little guy here next maybe I use that heart as a feature piece to secure a tie like a a piece of ribbon that will tie this journal closed and that heart could be used to anchor it i think that might be a better use of it just not a hundred percent sold on it down there what have i done here Okay. Last couple of stitches. Knot it off. Beautiful. All right. Let's get rid of that pin and that pin okay guys let's leave it at that and I will see you all in the next video and I think I'm going to use that as a an anchor point for a tie I'm not going to use it in that location so I might even go looking for something that can go here all right everyone see you in the next video bye for now